I'd like to welcome everyone this morning to Esther's Preparation Room. This is the first Saturday in February, where Ministry of Women Intercessors, we believe God has raised us up for such a time as this to fulfill our assignment that he has called us to, that he created us for. And part of that assignment is for us to partner with God, to bring God's will to pass in, on earth as it is in heaven. God has a desire for the nations of the world, so we stand in the gap for the nations. God has a desire and his plan for his church, so we also stand in the gap for the church. And God has a, des a plan, a desire for our lives, so we also stand in the place of prayer that his will will be established. And I believe that even as you have come, you will not lead the same way in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, we're very excited. We're going to be focusing on living in the spirit. Living in the spirit. And we believe strongly that as we pray today and as we this month as well, the Lord will give us understanding as to what it means to actually live in the spirit. Our focus every week we would have a focus and the focus for this week is the word of his power, the word of his power. First of all, let's begin to give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 118 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. It says in verse 5, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. When we come before the presence of God, especially at the beginning of a new month, let us come with thanksgiving in our heart. Let's just begin to give thanks to the Lord for a new month. Where I come from, it says that the person who knows how to give thanks for what they have received is guaranteed to receive more. Let us not be like the nine lepers who God did all sorts in their lives and healed them but they did not come back to give thanks. Thank God that you are alive to enter into the month of February 2016. Thank God for the life that flows inside of your body. Thank God for the breath that you take. Let's give him thanks for his grace and his mercy over us. If it was not for the Lord on our side, I don't know where we would be. It is his grace that causes us to go out and to come in. Whether we are in good times or, 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 or challenging times, we thank God because there is a strength that God gives to us. Let's just thank God that this month of February will be a good month unto us in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak into this month. Begin to declare that you will hear good news this month. This month will be a great month for you. In your life, in your career, in your relationships, in your family, in your finances, in your health, in whatever you're believing God for. That this month of February, begin to speak for that. I will declare this month of February, I will celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This month of February, I will walk so closely with the spirit, my spiritual life will not be the same again. This month of February, I will be a partner that God will use even on this earth to fulfill his purposes in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible also says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19, Paul said, And pray for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I want us to just pray this month for the church of God. We want to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Sisters, there's so much going on in the world. We need the church to shine as light. Darkness is pushing. Darkness seems to be increasing. But this is a time when the light of the church will shine. Father, we lift up the church, of the body of Christ this month. We pray that we will be one in the name of Jesus. That the true church of God will stand together. We, are, we will not break ranks in the name of Jesus. Wherever the church is, we represent the church, even in Esther's preparation room. We pray that only Spirit, you come upon us afresh like a rushing mighty wind. That all over the world, oh God Almighty, the church of God will arise and will arise strong in Jesus' name. Lord, use us for your purposes, oh God. Revive us and revive the body of Christ, oh Lord. Let the church begin to take its position in every strat. strat strata of, of life in the name of Jesus, in the area of government, in the area of politics, in the area of economy, in the area of finance, in the area of sports, in the area of media, in the area of business, in the area of family, in the area of education, everywhere, oh God Almighty, let the influence of your word begin to permeate, to make the world that we live in, oh God Almighty, manifest your glory, manifest your power, even in the mighty name of Jesus. 
we also want to pray that this month we will have more souls one into the kingdom. The Bible says he that wins souls is wise. Pray that God will use us as his witnesses. That God will cause us as his, the body of Christ to give more attention to soul winning. To give more attention to saving souls. That we will not just be casual. That we will be concerned about the people around us even in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will use us to touch lives even in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will use us to make a difference even in the body of Christ. In our neighborhood, at work, in our community, that when the Spirit of God stirs us up, that our voices will be heard on high in the name of Jesus. Can we also begin to pray for the nations, the different nations that we are in? We have different ladies from different parts of the world. Can you just lift up your voice? Don't only pray for your country. Use this time to pray for the continent. Pray for Europe. Pray for America. There is a plague that has been unleashed in America. Pray for in, 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 uh, in, in South America. Let's pray. As we pray for North America, let's also pray for South America. Let's pray that God will cause there to be a stay. Oh, we hear of viruses, even in Africa, breaking out. We hear of different things going on. Whatever continent that you are in, Australia, Asia, we lift them up and we pray, oh God, let the nations see the power of God. Let the nations be drawn unto God. The Bible says multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. This month, let multitudes give their lives to Christ. This month, let there be appearance of the power of God. This month, let many, oh God, be saved in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2, it says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. We see people walking in darkness, running out of Syria. We see pictures that are heart-wrenching. We see pictures that are shocking. We see the world in confusion. Things would have, the world would have thought we are better than this. We see a situation like this and the world is back to where they were years ago. Where nations are in turmoil. Where people, nobody is willing to stand up against um, evil and terrorism and dictatorship. We see where people are being killed. But we also know these people walking in darkness, in dark boats, on dark streets, crossing to different dangerous places, that there is a light that God will shine upon them. I want us to pray. Whether it is in their dream, let them see the light of God. Whether it is in the in, through the churches, in the places that they are in, let them see the light of God. But let's just pray that the people that are coming out of Syria, that God will have mercy upon them. Some people have died in the seas. Some people have died in the war. Some people have died due to pestilence and hunger. Let's just pray. We cannot be alive and be seeing this. It grieves the heart of God. Let's pray that, that, that God... God will cause this conflict to turn more people to him in the name of Jesus. That God will bring peace over that nation. There are scriptures that show that Damascus would fall. But let's pray that the people will be saved. That the people will be delivered. That they will see the light of God even in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. As we continue praying, we're going to be talk, praying about the word of his power. For most of us who are familiar, we had encouraged everyone to read the book by Paul Young, which called The Fourth Dimension. This month, we're going to be taking a lot of snippets from that book. If you haven't bought it, please make the effort to do so, because we believe that it takes us back to the foundation, a lot of things that we all forget that is important to a successful Christian life. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Hmm. All things were made through him. That means the Word is being referred to as he. The Word was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, the Word. And without the Word or without him was nothing made that was made. And that word that we're using he for in verse 14 became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, Then God said, let there be light and there was light. The word that was with the begin, in the beginning with God brought about light. We see the creative ability of the word in the whole of Genesis chapter 1. And John chapter 1 was where we got a revelation of how that word works. What do we need to pray about this morning? First, we must realize that the word of God is creative. It has inherent power and is eternal. 
The word of God does not come to an end. That's why when God said, let there be light, light has never stopped being since then. Unless God says that its dispensation is over. The word of God, that is Jesus, the word of God, is creative. We see a lot of creative things and Jesus manifested it when he came. The second thing is that the word of God is tangible. It can bring to life what did not originally exist. That's why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. This month, if we're going to live in the spirit, I want you to think to yourself, what are my prayer points? What am I believing God for? The word of God causes things that were not in existence to become existent. The way in which God created the world is the same way in which you are going to frame your own world, your own reality. It cannot be outside of the word of God. The word of God is tangible. It is something that can be held on to. Therefore, if you find a promise in the Bible, I want you to take that promise and make it become reality because that's what God does with the word. Finally, God and his word are one. You cannot separate God from his word. Jesus is the manifestation of God's word. That's why Jesus Christ said, myself and my father, we are one. That's why the Bible says there are three that bear witness, the word, the blood, and the spirit. The word. All one. All one. Therefore, if we are going to live in the spirit, we have to live by the word. And the word, what sort of word? The word of his power. Because the word of God has power inside of it. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know, during the holidays, we had family over and we're all talking and conversation went. We had some people who were not saved and, you know, we're like talking about, oh, is the Bible this? Is every word true? Something. We said going into that, uh, you know. But the truth of the matter is that Bible says all scripture, all, all, all. The word inspiration is the Greek word that I cannot pronounce. The open notes or something. Praise God for it. But this Greek word is a combination word from theos, which is God, and what I think is called penusta, which is to breathe. It means that all scripture is breathed by God. His breath, God's breath is upon it. The word of God is a product of God's breath. God himself speaks, or God, let's say God breathes into the scripture. That's why the scriptures have life. When Jesus faced temptation, he overcame by the word because the word has life. The word has the breath of the living God. When God breathed into Adam, Bible says Adam became a living soul. When God breathed into us, it means that his word comes into us and makes us alive. This morning, I want us to lift up our voices and begin to thank God. Begin to praise the name of the Lord for the word that he has given to us. Begin to thank God that we are privileged. Begin to say, Father, I thank you. I thank you because your word is here and amen. I thank you because you are faithful to your word. Begin to thank God for his word. I want us this morning to appreciate the word of God. We have our Bibles tossed under our bed. We have our Bibles tossed all over the place. We, in this part of the world, we have freedom to carry a Bible everywhere. Yet at times we forget the power that is inside of it. Let's begin to say thank you to the Lord. Thank you, God, because your word can never fail. Father, we thank you because your word is here and amen. You have given us this word. We are so privileged. The Bible says in Titus chapter 1 verse 2 that in the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. God before the beginning of time has promised us eternal life. Bible says God cannot lie. I don't know what situation or circumstance you are going through. This month, you will see that God cannot lie. You will trust in God's word. Begin to say thank you, Father, because I know you cannot lie. Therefore, I have confidence in your word. Therefore, I have faith in your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible also says, that. sorry, I also, also pray that the Holy Spirit will cause a deep hunger and a thirst in our hearts for the word of God. 
We want to become, when we know that this word has such power, I want to pray. Let's lift up our voices. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 says, Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant or like a baby, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. We need to be hungry and thirsty for God's word so we can train ourselves. God's word trains us. God's word helps us to know the will of God. God's word helps us to distinguish between good and evil. A lot of what we are struggling with in life is because we don't have enough of the word of God. It's because we don't have enough revelation. Begin to talk to the Holy Spirit. That spirit of the living God, this month and beyond, I'm going to live by your word. I'm going to live in the spirit. Spirit. Therefore, I need to study the word and I want there to be a deep hunger. Help me to desire to read the word before I eat my natural food. Holy Spirit, wherever I go, whether I'm driving, I'm on the train, I'm at work, help me to have a desire to listen to your word, to read it, to listen on audio, to read books that will motivate me, that will give me deeper understanding. Oh Lord, let me have a deep hunger and a deep revelation. Let the word change my life this month. Let me have a new experience in the word. Open my eyes, Holy Spirit, to see things I've never seen before in the word of God and open my eyes to have an understanding of your word, even in the name of Jesus. I want us to also pray that the power of God will manifest in our lives, that we will experience the creative power of God in our lives. Let's begin to lift up our voices. The Father, this month, the Bible says that your word has creative ability. Your word is mighty to save. Your word is mighty to deliver. Lord, this month, help me to experience your mighty word, even in the name of Jesus. Help me to experience the power of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says it is God who works in you, both to will and to do in order to fulfill his good purpose. Philippians 2.13. Begin to pray that, Lord, cause your word. Let me will your word. Let me do your word. Let me experience the creative power of your word in my life in, my, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Amen as we continue to talk about the word of his power when we live in the spirit we don't just word, want just the word his word we want to experience the rhema of the word Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says for the word of God is living which we already confirmed again because he's living because God put his breath inside of it and it's powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the word of God. This word is so powerful. Now, Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Hmm. It also says in James chapter 3 verse 5. It says, so also the tongue is a small member. Yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. Now let me back up a bit. When the Bible talks about the word of God being living and powerful. We must understand that there are different um, words in the Bible that represent the word of God. Most of us know the logos is God's written word. And the rema is God's spoken word. Customized for you and specific to your situation. So when we hold the Bible and it says all scripture, that means all logos, all of it. It's inspired by God. It's living. So people call it a book of stories. It is the word. And then the rema is when God speaks a specific word at a specific time. Now, for us to live in the spirit this month and beyond, I know we've always lived, but just to us, be conscious of it. We need to live by rema. Living in the spirit is living by rema. But what you need to understand is that if you don't have the logos in you, the Holy Spirit cannot give you a rema. If you don't have the logos, if you don't have the word of God, if you don't study, if you don't understand scripture, if you don't meditate on it, at a specific time when you need God to give you a word, the Holy Spirit will not be able to give you a rema because he brings to your remembrance. God will speak his own words to you that will then fit that situation. 
So if we want to live in the spirit, we need to live by the word of God. The spirit of God wants to speak to you every day on your way to work. He wants to tell you what's about to happen. I've been having some interesting experiences at work. He's giving me understanding. I really give God the praise. He's helping me. I was brought in to do something and I, it was all modeled up. I'm just step by step, step by step, making calls, getting people. But the interesting thing is that the kind of people that I had to make calls were very senior executives. And God was, you know, by the time you're speaking to them, you know, you're like, God, please, I hope I'm not going to just say rubbish in front of these people. Half the time, I open my mouth, I close my eyes, I say, what did I just say? I hope it makes sense. Half my word was, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And they're like, sure, Abby, yeah, sure, Abby. You know, I'm like, Holy Spirit, please help me. But I saw him help me this week. Now, we have to also watch the word we speak over our lives. If we're supposed to live by the word of God, then we also must be careful with the words that we speak. That's why the Bible says the tongue has the power of life and death. If God's word is life, that means you are better be speaking what is positive into your life and not what is negative. The enemy wants us to not believe God's word, so we'll speak negative. So I'm asking you this morning, does your word align with God's word? Romans 4, 17 says, God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. He didn't say, and thinks about those things which be not as though they were. God says he calls it. He speaks it. We need to become speaking spirits. We, not, we need to become. We are speaking spirits. We need to start speaking. Speaking God's word. Let's open our mouth and begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, if you call those things which be not as though they were, I will call those things which be not as though they were. I call my life into order in the name of Jesus. My words will align with your word in the name of Jesus. I will not speak negatively in the name of Jesus. No matter the pain I feel in my body, I will speak it out in faith. I will decree your divine healing in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, please put a check into my heart. Every time I say something negative, please correct me in the name of Jesus. My sisters, lift up your voice and pray. The Bible says the word of God is living and powerful. It can divide into places you cannot imagine. I don't know what you are going through, but I want you to pray that the word of God will expose whatever it is in your life that is stopping you from receiving from God. At times we don't realize that there is secret unbelief in our lives or there is secret fear in our lives. Can it really happen? Sometimes we think we believe God. We follow the crowd, but we don't. This morning I want you to say, Holy Spirit, expose anything that is inside of me stopping me from believing in God. If there's any lust in my heart that I'm battling with, today I receive the Spirit of God. Because Bible says that I am not under the curse, but I'm under life. Bible says Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, my mind is renewed in the name of Jesus. I will not walk in lust. I will not walk in unforgiveness. I will not walk in pride. I will not walk in anger. I will not walk in fear. Because I have the Spirit of God. I begin to declare over my life that I have the Spirit of of, of kindness operating in me. I am not selfish. I have the spirit of goodness operating in me. I will make a difference in the lives of other people. I have the spirit of love inside of me. I cannot hold malice. I will not have malice with anybody. By your grace, Lord, I forgive. Everything that is holding me back, everything that has stood against me to hinder me from stepping into the promises of God. Holy Spirit, expose it by your word in the name of Jesus. Let me see those things that have hindered me because this is my time, because this is my season, because something good is coming my way. Way and nothing will stop it even in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 33 verse 9 says, For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. This morning, I just want you to understand something. It's time you see when we are operating in the fourth dimension. When we are operating, we must understand that. God speaks things that did not exist and they exist. So for you as a child of God to live in the spirit, you need to learn how to speak things that did not exist and they will come to pass. I have seen it severally. I have seen it in multiple ways in my life. I have seen the manifestation of it. In some areas, it took longer than others. In some areas, it, there were other things going on that God was taking me through a journey. There's nothing you desire God for. If you have ever seen yourself as a married woman, know that it is done in the name of Jesus. At the right time, God will expose you. God will take you there. But whatever it is that he's teaching you or he needs to reveal to you, he will do that when you walk in the spirit. At times, one word, one word from Christ. The centurion says, you don't have to come to my house, Lord Jesus. Just speak the word. I know it will be done. 
That is faith. We'll be talking about faith next week. You don't want to miss this month. It's time for us to operate on a new dimension. So the Bible says that your tongue, your tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. That our tongue can cause a great fire to start. You know, that is positive and negative. But we see that it's the same tongue, the same words that our tongue will speak, that God speaks. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to speak. And begin to speak God's word over your life. Begin to speak God's promises over your life. I don't know what you might be going through this month of February. I don't know what you're believing God for this month of February. I want you in the next few minutes to speak your breakthrough in faith. Knowing that it is done, knowing that as you speak using God's word, if you have to go look for the promises where it is for what you are believing God for, go look for it. If you are struggling with your child, the Bible says that my children will be a fruitful bow around me. They shall be the planting of the Lord in the name of Jesus. My Bible says that the right, the, the children of the righteous will be established forever. Oh, begin to decree over your children. Your children will not be caught up in the lust of the flesh, in the lust of the eyes, in the pride of life. Oh, the Bible says a thousand may fall at our right hand, ten thousand at our left hand. None shall come near us. We have a, we have a covenant with divine protection. The Bible says that I am the God that healeth thee. I decree in my body I am healed. I decree that sickness cannot have a place in my body. I speak for that the spirit of God lives inside of me. Therefore, the power of God rests upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says I am the head and not the tail. I will not beg for bread in the name of Jesus. I will not beg for bread. My hands will prosper. Whatsoever I lay my hands upon to do, this month will prosper. Wherever I go, Father Lord, the doors of favor will open up unto me. The Bible says that I will open unto you the double leaf doors. I will give unto you the treasures, the hidden treasures of darkness. I will not lack any good thing. I will not be stranded this month of February. Every need before it comes up has been met, even in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the Father knows the things that we need to have even before we pray. Therefore, Lord, I will not be anxious. I cancel the spirit of anxiousness from me. I cancel the spirit of fear from my life. I will not operate in fear. I will not operate in doubt. I will operate in faith. I will stand upon your word. And I know that no one that puts their trust in you will ever be put to shame. Shame will not be your portion, my sister. This month, the enemy will not say, where is your God in the name of Jesus? The Lord will raise help from you from all over, even in the mighty name of Jesus. We must be militants this month as we pray. The word of God is powerful. And the word must manifest in our lives. I'm at that point. I want to see the word. At times, we can grow into this place of being Christians for so long that we no longer believe and honor God's word. We feel as if we have trusted and it has not happened. I was, my husband and I were talking about this and we said, you know, may God help us. Do you know that sometimes when we've been Christians for so long, we become cynical Christians. Will it really happen like that? I beg, you know, let, 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 let's believe God, but let's do what we can. At times, we talk like that. At times, we talk like that. Peter walked on water, but when he saw the wind, when he saw the waves, he was intimidated. I don't know who's on the call. I don't know the wind and the wave, the contrary wave that have risen up against you. Just begin to speak, peace be still. Anyone going through any tough situation, begin to speak, peace be still. Peace be still to that situation. You must hear the word of the Lord. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. 2016 is a great year. 2016 is an abundant year. We all know how we entered into it with promises of God. We're just in February and the enemy is trying to intimidate us. Speak peace, be still to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. We're using a lot of scriptures, and we're going to load this up online so that you can use it if you want to pray with it during the week as well. You can use that. The Bible says, Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well. He was asking Jeremiah, what do you see? For I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. 
You know, as I was preparing for this, this scripture encouraged me. There are some things that have taken a long time for me to see in my life. And when I read this scripture, I was encouraged. God said, can you still see the vision I showed you? I said, yes. Can you still see the things that you are believing me for? I said, yes. Then I want you to be rest assured at any case. I am alert. I know everything going on. And I am active because something doesn't look like it's happening in the physical. You don't know what is happening in the spiritual. There is activity going on. And I'm watching over my word to perform it. Can you imagine? Visualize it. Can you imagine God watching over it? Satan will come in one way. God will overthrow him. The enemy will come in another way. God will overthrow him. You yourself will even go into the place of unbelief and you will act silly. The Holy Spirit will come and correct you. Why? Because God knows there is a word hanging over your life that he is watching to perform it. And until that word is performed, it will not come back to him void. If we're going to live in the spirit, we must learn how to operate from the fourth dimension, which is the ability to believe God's word. The fourth dimension is a spiritual realm where the rules and the laws and the principles that operate are different. The first thing you must learn to do is to believe God's word. That's all Abraham did and God signed a covenant with him that is still in effect. Second of all, when you walk in righteousness and speak God's word, my sister, God's word in your mouth will have the exact same effect as God's word from his mouth. That's why Jesus Christ says that when you are abiding in me, whatever you say, it will happen. So when God said, let there be light, God is saying that I want you to, to go to a particular place, wherever, whatever might be going on there, whatever darkness in your family, whatever occultic situation, whatever long-standing situation that you've seen in your family, I want you to speak light and light will come forth. Because your word is as powerful in your mouth as it's as powerful in my mouth. Isn't that power? That is the way Jesus operated. And that's how Jesus wants us to operate. That's why the Bible says that in Romans 4, 7, God quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. We're going to be doing that all through this month. We're going to call the things that seem as if they were. God wants those promises that he has put as logos. God wants you to begin to speak them forth as Rema, as his spirit leads you. Let's lift up our voices. Psalm 33 verse 9 says, For he spoke and it was done. I think we shared this already. He commanded and it stood fast. I use that scripture. So begin to command God's word over your life. Begin to frame 2016. Begin to declare that this month of February, oh, we will see the manifestation of God's word. Pray that you will carry the presence of Jesus everywhere you go. This is so important. Jesus carried the word of his power to bring about change. We've talked about it as women ministers. You have a ministry. Pray if you're a teacher, every time you go into class, you will solve the issues that your children are going through, your students are going through. Every time you step into the office, you will solve the problems on your job because you carry the presence of Jesus everywhere you go. You will speak the word of God into the atmosphere and you will see it materialize. Begin to decree, begin to declare. In the church, it will manifest. In the market, place it to manifest in your body to manifest in your life to manifest over our nation to manifest ah the church should be the one determining who the next president will be in the spirit but we have lost that power we do not realize that we have the power to do and to undo if we say it will not happen it should not happen that's why the, church, the enemy comes against the body of christ to make sure that we are not united and people do not understand the power that we have so that we cannot speak but this morning i want you to speak up and to begin to say, Lord, I carry your presence everywhere I go. I will bring solutions to issues. I will not be stranded this month. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere there was a confusion, Jesus spoke the right word. Father, this month, no matter what I face, help me to speak the right word. Let my mouth not say something negative. Let my mouth not bring something, not say something that would bring problems. But let my mouth speak that which is positive in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my mouth declare that which you will do, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, I want you to pray for boldness to walk according to the leading of the Spirit. It takes boldness to live in the Spirit. Begin to speak and begin to say, Lord, this month, help me not to be fearful. The one thing the enemy throws against us is, what if it does not happen? That is not our 
business. Our job is to speak the word of God. God's job is to make it come to pass. Do not let the enemy get you confused. Begin to speak this month that everything you've said for not just February, but the whole of 2016 and beyond will happen. Ask God for boldness to believe his word, boldness to walk in his word, Boldness to go as led by the Spirit. Oh, God might speak to one or two of us in this place this week and tell you to go and talk to somebody. For some of us, I don't know what it is you're trying to do. God may give you instructions to go and speak to somebody that is critical to you. It may not look like it. Oh, we were listening last week as we were reminded when God told Elijah to go to the widow of Zarephath, that she will sustain him. When he got there, the woman said, I'm about to die. I have nothing. Does not that sort like, does it, does that sort like God's word didn't make sense, but Elijah said, you are the one God said will help me. The woman said, I'm about to die. You are saying, I, I need help. You are saying, I should come and help you. But at the end of the day, he, she was the one that had to help him because she had the muscle he needed to bring it to pass. I want you to pray that Lord, as you lead me, wherever you lead me to, wherever job you lead me to, wherever position you lead me to, give me boldness. Help me to walk majestically. I will not walk around with my head down. I will not walk around as one who has been pushed around by the enemy. Today, in the name of Jesus, I walk in boldness. I walk in authority. I walk in the power of the living God because I know God's word will never fail, even in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice. I begin to thank God. Thank God because some Something new is happening. I see the Holy Spirit causing a fire in your loins. I see the Holy Spirit causing a hunger inside of you. This week, we will dwell in the Word of God. This week, we will spend time in God's Word. This week, we will be hungry for God's Word. This week, we will pray over God's Word. This week, we will speak only God's Word, even in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'll just hand over to um, Hilda as she leads us in the prayers for um, the persecuted church. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> We're going to be praying for the. Can you hear me, Pastor? We're going to be praying for the persecuted church in China. Um, just a little background. So in China, the main religion is atheism. Other religions are uh, Buddhism, Taoism, and Islam. About 85 million are Christians. So we are going to be praying for China this morning, um, for those that, for the pe persecuted Christians and also for the country as well. Um, one of the pastors in 2009 in China was sentenced to criminal detention for seven years and that was because herself and some other leaders were accused of gathering people to, di to disturb the public order because they organized the prayer rally. Uh, right now, she's in um, prison, suffering from medical problems, and um, the prison has refused to grant her um, medical care. Um, these are some of the things that we do take for granted here. We um, organize prayer, prayer retreats. We organize um, things in the community where we pray. Um, we just want to pray for this um, pastor right now. We want to pray for God's he divine healing power. And we want to pray for her expedited release from prison. We're going to be using the scriptures, Isaiah 58, verse 8. Um, your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rare guard. We want to leave the pastor young, only into God's hand this morning, and pray that God's divine healing power will be upon her. That God will church, will return the hearts of the uh, officials because in the word of God it says He can turn the hearts of kings. That He will turn the hearts of the officials that are currently refusing her for medical treatment. That God will go into their hearts and He will He will He will touch their hearts and they will give her that that care that she needs in the mighty name of Jesus. And above all, her release shall be expedited, so she will go back and be able to continue to preach the word of God and spread the gospel of God in China in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, we're also going to be praying for God to rule over China. We're going to use the scripture Psalm 22 verse 28. Say for kingship belongs to the Lord and He rules over nations. Let us pray for God to rule over China, to rule over the affairs of China, to rule over everything that is currently going on in that country. That God should come and take absolute control. He will come and reign. He will come and reign over their affairs in the mighty name of Jesus. He will come
come and show himself strong to that country. He will come and he will come and heal that country. He will come and restore that country in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray for the salvation of souls for the people from China. Like I mentioned, there are still other religions that are practiced. Let us pray that God will turn the people of China away from those idols. Ezekiel 14, 6 says, Therefore says unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away from faces your faces from all your abominations. Let us pray, O oh Lord, that God will curse them to repent. There will be God God will arrest their spirit man in the mighty name of Jesus, that they would repent from all of those idols that worship and turn to the true and living God in the mighty name of Jesus. That God 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 will arrest their souls. God will speak to their spirit man in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray according to Isaiah 49 verse 6. It says, I will make you a light to the Gentiles and you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray for God's salvation. God's salvation upon the people of China in the mighty name of Jesus. That those that are still living in darkness, let us pray for the light of God to shine upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let us pray for boldness and courage for the persecuted Christians in China to rise up to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.16 says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Let us pray for divine strength. Let us pray for those people, those people that have taken a stand, that God will strengthen them. He will give them boldness. They will speak, they will speak with boldness. They will be able to go forth and share his share God's gospel with boldness. They will be they will know they, that God will take away every form of fear, every form of timidity in the mighty name of Jesus. Ephesians 6 verse 20 says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That God will give them the utterance, the boldness to speak as they ought to speak, to speak about Christ, to speak about God, that, that, that souls will be won. Souls will, more souls will be won into the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let us pray for the release of other imprisoned believers in China they, that they may continue to proclaim the gospel. So there are still so many other people that are in prison in China, so, so many other persecuted Christians that are still in prison, that are trusting God, that were trusting God for their release. According to 2 Timothy 4 verse 17, it says, But the Lord stood by me, and he strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Let us pray that God will stand by them. God will stand by them. That God's favor will be upon them. God will keep them at wherever they are. God will keep them and God will bring them out of that place so that they, 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 they might proclaim his message, proclaim the word of God to the ends of the earth, even in China and beyond, in the mighty name of Jesus. Acts 16 verse 25 says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed, and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. It was pray as they seek God's face, as they pray, as they praise, O oh Lord, within that, confi within that confined space, that God will cause for there to be a shaking, O oh God, that God will cause for there to be a a miracle, O oh God, that there will be a divine release, O oh God, that God will touch the hearts of the officials, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, and these people shall be free, O oh Lord, to go forth and proclaim the gospel of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us just thank God, let's thank God, let's thank God, let's thank God, even regarding that this year, there will be testimonies, oh God. There will be testimonies. There will be testimonies of Jesus regarding salvation of souls. There will be testimonies in the country of China in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Nike. 
Thank you. Father, we thank you so much for today's meeting. Thank you for your presence in our midst. And we thank you so much because we know that you have answered our prayers. Even in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.